you know, there is so many different ways to letter as a lefty, but um, just sharing just one aspect in my personal experience hopefully will help you guys um, try that as well. Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and in this interview, I'm talking to Young Hay of Logos Calligraphy, who is walking us through three brush lettering tips. And what's interesting about doing this with Young Hay is that she's a lefty, and she has arguably the most interesting pen hold and paper angle that I've ever seen for a lefty, and she's perfected it so that it works amazingly for her. So if you're a lefty, you're in for a treat with this one, but this video is also for all of you. So let's jump right in. Young Hey, welcome to the show. Well, welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I am super excited to have you here today because I think you're one of the first people I followed when I when it came to learning calligraphy, I think, which was five years ago. Insane. And like I said, you've been on the show before. So a lot of people mm -hmm. have probably gotten to know you or might have taken your courses or whatever. At least they've seen the other video. If they haven't, obviously I'll link to it and they can go see it. But um, mm -hmm. can you just give us like a a 30 second rundown of who you are and what you do and how you got into all this stuff? Sure. Uh, so I'm Young Hay. I'm based in Southern California. Um, I picked up calligraphy uh, about, I guess it would be about five years ago. And um, yeah, it just came in a place season when I was raising kids and we were in a transition period. I was living in Florida and um, just wanted to write, uh, be able to write something like pretty and encouraging um, and uplifting. And so I sought out like this calligraphy class in Florida, met with this amazing teacher, Kay Hanna, and picked up pointed pen and then picked up like brush calligraphy and just like picked up all the pens and all the art tools and just had fun. Um, and so since then, it's just been such an incredible journey. Um, just, you know, learning as well as teaching and getting to meet you and so many other artists on Instagram. So last time you came mm -hmm. on, you showed us copper plate calligraphy. Is that still what right. you're doing most of? Like, do you do mostly pointed pen and then just sometimes brush pen or is it like 50-50 for you? Um, so yes, I do mostly pointed pen only because I find it to be very delicate and I use it for um, teaching as well as like corresponding letters and, you know, doing commission work in that way. But um, since then, I feel like I'm exploring different pens. So if I were to hand letter on like a mirror for events, I would do like chalk brush, you know, pens as well as um, I do brush lettering a lot for my packages. So when people purchase things from me and I, I want to like write their names and be able to personalize it. So I usually um, kind of sneak in my brush practices like through that way. Yeah, I've seen you lettering on your packages. And actually that brings mm -hmm. me to one of the things that like, I really hope you cover mm -hmm. in this video because I always notice every single time you post one of those your box is turned like completely upside down <laughs> and for people who don't know and people who are watching mm -hmm. young hay's a lefty and so like it makes a little more sense it doesn't sound as crazy when you say that she's a lefty because it you know turning it makes a big difference but um mm -hmm. i know that in this video like you'll probably have a couple tips for lefties and i just like really hope that you're going to share that one because i think it's probably you're probably one of the only people I know who holds their pen and paper like that. And it might be like a huge game changer for a lot of lefties. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, and the, uh, like, I'll definitely be sharing about the paper angle and just like how I first started brush, you know, lettering and how I've experimented trying different angles, but then eventually um, it's kind of just continued to turn and turn until it was completely like, sideways like so I write currently towards my body um, and for me that particular paper angle really helped me to like increase my range of motion and do a lot of the flourishing that I love and so hopefully that helps you guys who are tuning in and watching this that you know there's so many different ways to letter as a lefty but um, just sharing just one aspect in my personal experience hopefully will help you guys um, try that as well yeah and and mm -hmm. I already said in the intro, like what, what your lesson is going to be. And so everybody mm -hmm. knows like, this isn't just for lefties. It's going to be for everybody, but I know that you'll touch on some lefty things. And so I guess one question that I would ask you is just, and I mean, maybe it's not really a question. It's just like a discussion. 
I get a lot of people who are just really concerned that they can't do calligraphy at all as a lefty. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just like, give me your thoughts on that. <laughs> Um, I understand because I feel like when I was learning pointed pen, um, I had a time period where I wanted to give up and I wanted to just like take a break uh, indefinitely because it was very frustrating to figure out like the simplest thing, which is like how to hold the pen or how to angle the paper because those two things, I feel like if you don't find that sweet spot for you, then it can really like hinder your your joy of learning or to overcome those hurdles and so I guess my encouragement is um it's very simple but not to give up but to recognize that even your failures and your mistakes and just overcoming your struggles is part of this beautiful journey of learning um, and so for me trying ways that I feel like was uncomfortable actually forced me to figure out ways that does work for me. And so, um, you know, recognizing that failures and struggles and disappointments and all of that is part of the learning curve and um, to really embrace all of those things. And because um, I feel like the biggest critic is ourselves, you know, we can be our um, biggest like discouragement and um, it, we can easily give up because of that. Uh, but I find that having the attitude of, you know, um, joy as well as, you know, pushing through those like moments can really like make a difference. So yeah, encourage you guys to just keep going, keep trying. And like, maybe one day you'll have like a bad day, but then tomorrow you'll pick it up and start it again. Cause I have bad days too. And sometimes I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to do any hand lettering today. I'm not going to do any calligraphy. It's not working. And so I'll actually take like a couple days off and be like, you know, I'm just going to take a walk. I'm going to do something not related to pointed pen or brush lettering um, because that can become very performance oriented um, and rather I want it to be something that is therapeutic and you know um, sparks joy so yeah and I love mm -hmm. what you said about just experimenting and like having a, a, a joyful attitude about the whole thing I think that that extends to everybody but more so even for lefties because if you treat it as an experiment and you just keep like playing with what works for you and how to hold the right. pen and how to angle your paper and stuff like eventually you're going to hit that stride and yeah. I know you're going to touch on that because you just told us you're going to show us how you hold your paper and everything like that so maybe I'll just let you get into your lesson and then we'll chat after okay sounds good so when it comes to brush lettering the first thing I would say is it's important to know your pen and it's important to recognize the kind of flexibility and size of your pen tip because depending on the size of your pen tip as well as flexibility, you are going to have um, a different way of experiencing uh, writing with these. And so if I were to categorize um, a couple of these I grabbed that I currently own and use, um, I would actually categorize it into the following. So you have your fine tip pens and these are very small tip pens. And because of the size of this tip, I'm actually able to use a smaller X height and be able to have a lot of control using this. Uh, very beginner friendly. Um, then you have your medium size pens. And I'm not talking about medium as in height um, of these pens, but um, when I'm talking about medium size pens, I'm talking about the tip. So as you can see, this particular tip is slightly larger than the fine tip pens. And then I have, um, and then I would categorize as in large um, tip pens. As you can see, the tip is even bigger than the medium size as well as this, the fine tip pen. And so if I were to just show you guys side by side, you'll see that the top, um, the fine tip pen is the smallest, then you have the medium size pens and the large. And because these tips are varying in height and even width, um, mainly I'm looking at the height. If it's greater in height, I find that it has more flexibility and when you're adding pressure to the pen, you're gonna be able to achieve thicker shades. And that's um, pretty much the big difference between these. Okay, so the last category I would um, share is these. And so this one is called the water brush and um, this one is made by Pentel as well. And as you can see, these are like real brushes. So you can actually use this for like watercolor painting. Um, and But the great thing about this is you can also use it for brush lettering. And um, because it's made of real brushes, 
Um, it's going to have a lot of flexibility and not as much control unless you're being very careful in the way that you're applying it to the paper. And so it also depends on how you're holding the pen, which we're going to touch upon a little later. And this one is already comes loaded with an orangey color, yellow orange color. And as you can see from this, you can't tell from here, but if I were to put it on a piece of paper, um, you'll see that the that it spreads pretty wide as you put it on paper. Okay, so these are different in that I'm using real brushes for these. So if you're starting out, I would get a couple and experiment um, with these pens. Um, definitely for beginners, I highly recommend these fine tip pens because you have um, a greater sense of control over the tip. But um, the medium sized pen and large as well as a Crayola works as well. Um, it's just that the tip of the pen will determine um, the size of your X height. So the second thing would be to figure out as a lefty what paper angle works best for you. Uh, when I first started my journey, um, I remember scrolling on Instagram, trying to find left-handed letterers and study how they position their paper. Because as you know, as a lefty, um, the biggest hurdle when it comes to writing is not only visibility of our letters as we write across the paper, but it's also smudging issues as well as just being able to um, have the strokes go smoothly. And so um, the paper angle uh, really made a huge difference for me and um, similar to the way that I position my paper uh, for a pointed pen I actually angle my paper to the right about 90 to 100 degrees and I'm writing towards my body this way and that's something that I have adapted um, throughout the beginnings of my journey I think it took about like a good year before I settled on this uh, particular paper angle but when I first started off um, I actually uh, found a couple of accounts that um, were lettering when the paper angle was angled to the left about 45 degrees or even more and so if the 45 degrees the tip of the bottom of this paper is going to be pointed to your body um, and what I saw was that you are actually keeping your wrist above the baseline and you're making your strokes um, like this and so let me just demonstrate here for you so this is my guide sheet um, this is going to be the six millimeter guide sheet for uh, brush pens and i also have one where um, i'll show you the differences for using um, another guide sheet that has the x height as well as um, the size of the x height will be increasing in number for these so, so i can demonstrate the fine tip medium as well as the large but for now we're going to use this one without any of those markers um, but when i'm positioning my paper um, 45 degrees to the left and i'm going to be writing above my baseline so if we were to draw our baseline okay so with a brush pen if I angle it like this this is the way I've seen a lot of people write their letter so they're gonna keep your arm on top of the baseline and we're gonna use this 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 slant line is at 55 degrees for usually for a copper plate calligraphy and then we're gonna hold the pen like this so we're not gonna angle the pen out away from our body, but make sure it's always towards your body um, and right below this knuckle part. And then we're gonna make sure to put pressure when where you have the shade. Okay, so if I'm doing it like this, I'm gonna lift when I get to the hairline and pressure and then release. And you can even experiment with, if the 45 degrees is not feeling comfortable, you can even do it more, okay? Um, so now I'm doing it more and I'm seeing how this feels. Uh, I actually think this might be more comfortable, okay? Um, so here I'm gonna do my B. Make sure to keep it light on the upstroke. This one barely grazed the paper. Your exit stroke, and then you're just gonna write ABC as an example. 
So I spent about a couple of months writing at this paper angle and it was okay because at least I knew how to make, um, I was able to execute the shapes. I saw my thicks and thins. Okay. Um, and you want to hold the pen at about, I would say about 45 degrees from the paper here. Okay. But the problem, I guess, the issue I was running into with having the pen being held this way is that, um, as you can see, when I'm doing these extra strokes um, and entrance strokes, my body is here at the bottom of the screen. And so the upstrokes and the exit strokes are all going away from my body. And having this kind of emotion, um, as a lefty, I just felt like it wasn't... Um, uh, allowing me to make smooth strokes upward. And so um, that's when I started to experiment other things and other paper angles. And so for now, um, so now when I do brush calligraphy, I actually point it um, 90 degrees. Um, I angle it 90 degrees to the right. So let's do a different example down here. And by turning the paper 90 degrees to my right, it really allowed me to not only see my letters, but now I'm able to flourish and I'm able to really like see my paper and not worry about smudging. Um, and if you turn your paper this way, my wrist is going to be below the baseline. Um, and not only that, I'm able to see my whole area and I know where my pen is going. And it really helped me also with um, the smooth upstrokes because now when I'm doing the upstrokes, okay, I'll do the upstrokes down here. When I'm doing the upstrokes, it's actually going now towards my body. So when I'm doing these light upstrokes this way, I was able to execute these really consistently and smoothly. So this is the main reason why I switched to this particular um, paper angle. And so let me give you an example for writing it this way. So you're going to hold it the same way. You're going to hold it so that the angle of the pen is angled at about 45 degrees from the bottom of the paper. And you're going to point the pen towards your body. And so with this particular hold, and here I use one, two, three, four lines up. So I just want to make sure I have the same here. Okay, so I'm going to do thick. Then, okay, remember to um, lighten up your hand when you're going for the exit stroke. So I never positioned my paper this way for my regular handwriting, but I've just grown over the years to get used to writing sideways because um, if you understand a copper plate shapes and the basic strokes, um, I'm just looking at that oval shape and creating my letters. So I'm not thinking to myself, oh, like um, I need my paper to look like this so I can see my letter. So um, this helped me to really execute flourishing and and keep my hand um, very like light and gliding along the paper. Okay, so I would definitely um, try this paper angle as a lefty. Um, try to turn your paper um, towards like about 90 degrees, 100 degrees to your right and see how that feels for you. Um, I've seen some great um, letterers do it this way where you're, point, you're angling it to the left. Um, I just personally love um, this paper angle where you're turning it to the right 90 because of the range of motion and um, the visibility as well as especially the upstrokes and the smoothness of my strokes as I'm doing it. So hopefully that helps you guys to just visually see the difference as I'm doing these letters. The third thing I would like to say is um, you want to watch the angle of your pen to paper. And this time I'm going to actually use 
the guy sheet here where it has a small, medium, and large. And so this is still the six millimeter, but with the top part here, it's going to, ju we're just gonna be using one line for the X height. And for the middle portion, we're using two lines and the bottom portion, we're using three lines for the X height. And so um, for the top part, for the fine tip pens, um, this can be a good, um, you are still gonna be able to execute letters uh, with the small guide sheets up here. And you wanna watch the angle of your pen to paper, meaning that um, sometimes if you hold it, let's say back here, if you hold your pen a little bit further back and you're gonna lower the angle of your tip to the paper, you're gonna see that it's going to thicken up your hairlines. And so um, as an example, um, let me see. If I do it using the fine tip, you may not see it as much on the fine tip because it's not as big as the large ones, but we'll try. Okay, so here's the L. And then if I lift that angle of my pen to the paper, I'm able to have a much more um, visibly different shade to hairline. And so, um, if you're looking for a more delicate script and a delicate look to your letters, um, you want to make sure to troubleshoot by adjusting the angle of your pen to the paper. So if you're going to keep it low, um, and this, um, I can show you an example with using other pens. So, so for the medium size pens, let's use the brushables, the zig. Okay. And we use, let's write the word love. Upstroke. And this time I'm gonna keep, actually I forgot to keep it low. So if you're gonna hold it down here and your pen is gonna be at a lower angle. Okay, you have that kind of a look. But if you are going to um, lift the angle of the pen, then you're able to achieve more of a difference between the hairline and the shade. Okay, so you can see a difference between these two words here. But with the medium sized pen, um, as you can see, once you've um, increased the X height, it actually, sometimes you may want to increase the X height when you're using larger tip pens. Uh, because with the smaller X height, it's gonna be really hard. Even if you're adjusting the angle of your pen to paper, it's gonna be hard to see that difference between the shade and hairline. And so I would experiment with um, just continually increasing the X height to see what works best for your pen. And so even this, um, t this would be like 12 millimeter X height. Um, this would, this still feels a little bit um, small for this particular pen. Um, so if I were to make it bigger, so this would be now three, so 18 millimeters. Okay, let's see. That feels more comfortable and um, I feel like you're able to see the transitions and have the thick to the thins better. And even you can try bigger. You can double it. Okay, so with brush pens, it's such a great alternative to lettering on bigger surfaces and X height. So I love doing these for, you know, outgoing packages or whenever I have to make bigger signage. Um, and I still want to maintain the elegance of a shaded script style. Okay. So just to share, I'm going to share a little bit about that, um, more of that brush feel. 
Okay, so when you have, when you're working with these um, pens where you have the actual brush feel, um, it's really cool to get like that textured look. And I like to use even watercolor paper. And the one that I have is by Canson XL Cold Press Watercolor Paper. It has just the right amount of tooth and texture. And I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like if you're using these particular pens um, to do your lettering. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this orange one, okay? So with these, you can get a lot of texture. Um, and I find it like, um, it's really fun to play around with it. So, uh, especially with real brushes. I don't like the word texture. And this, you have to kind of squeeze to get more of that ink out onto the brush. But as you can see, um, it's very flexible. And so you wanna make sure you have, a, um, if you feel like you're, you're not getting a lot of difference between your shade and your hairline, you just wanna lift your pen angle. Um, but just play around with it. Sometimes you wanna load your, load your ink and other times you may just like that dry brush look. Um, Gonna write texture. Sometimes I like to play with just um, having a really dramatic transition, thick to thin. And then you can. This particular. Um, brush has that kind of effect that you can achieve um, by trying it on watercolor paper. When it comes to using these pens, the water brush pens, um, you can add water in here if you need to, um, but I like to also just dip it right into the ink. So I have some walnut ink in here in my dinky dip, and this is what I use for calligraphy, but just to show you guys you can actually use this with a brush pen too. So you're just gonna dip the brush directly into the walnut ink. And this pen tip is actually pretty skinny. I think this one is the fine tip. So you're gonna be able to have your, um, you can write smaller with these, okay? But because it's a real brush, it spreads out and you can still get that textured effect. And this is really fun to just play with different gradients. You can do like more bold shading. Okay, so um, that's really like fun to just play around with um, these pens just for the textured look. Um, but the rest of the pens um, you can use for even uh, commission work or just practicing your letters. And I would recommend um, with the other pens, with the regular brush pens, I wouldn't recommend so much texture because you can um, run into fraying your tips of your pen. So um, this particular um, practice sheet is uh, just my guide sheets printed on HP Premium 32. They're very smooth laser paper. So whatever smooth paper you have um, is would be my recommendation for practicing brush lettering. You can also practice it on Rodia pads. Um, these are great for calligraphy as well because they're very smooth. Um, or if you want to practice on, let's say, this translucent paper, you can actually put your guide sheet directly behind these papers so that um, if you don't have access to a printer, you can just slip one of these guide sheets behind the translucent paper and you're still going to be able to see the guidelines um, behind it. Okay, so have fun, um, experiment, 
uh, different things. Give yourself grace and time to figure out what you feel comfortable with. But um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, Young Hay, I know that that's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. Um, specifically that lefty tip. I just can't get over how you hold your pen like that. But I guess, I mean, if I think about it, holding it in my right hand, and like I often will write kind of sideways like that. It just looks so weird to me when I see it from a right, right, perspective. Right. But I, mm -hmm. I just really hope that people like lefties will experiment with that because clearly it has done wonders for you and your skills. Yeah, it really like helped me to enjoy like, you know, lettering again. And actually as a right-handed person, um, I don't know if you know Michael Saul, he's one of the master pen men, but when I, when I got to meet him at the LA Pen Fair, um, he actually turns his paper completely sideways as well. And he writes like, you know, away from his body, but it's pretty much almost 90 degrees too. So that was very encouraging for me to see that it's not like a weird lefty thing, but um, even as a right-handed, you know, calligrapher, hand letterer, like there's just like so many unique, you know, paper angles and holes. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I had one important question, but I didn't want to interrupt you as you were going, and that was um, those guide sheets that you were showing. I know people are going to be right. wondering if they can get them from you. So do you have those anywhere for people to get? Yes, I will um, send them over to you. And um, yeah, you can link it here in the video or um, yeah, shoot them out. So I'll make sure to finalize those guide sheets. And, and it's pretty much just, it's like the six millimeter lines as well as the slant lines, which helps me with copper plate. But I know with modern calligraphy, modern brush lettering, you don't have to stay on slant. So feel free to use the slant lines or not. And then I just like using like different um, X heights so that you can play around with the small as well as the large brush pen. So hopefully that helps you guys just to test the samples to see which X height works for which pen. Yeah, yeah, super helpful. I'll, um, whenever you send those over to me, I'll make sure that they're in the description of this video when it gets posted. I know people okay. will love that. So thanks for, thanks for giving those out. And I just had one more question and that is just mm -hmm. like, if you could only write with one tool or pen for the rest of your life, what would it be? And is it in that beautiful jar of pens behind you? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm like organizing my pen. Um, hmm. Oh, that's such a tough question. Wait, so anything, any, any, any writing tool? utensil, you can writing only utensil. use one for the rest of your life. I actually really love the pencil. I know it's, um, I don't know if it's going to be a popular one, but um, I love it because you can still get the thicks and the shape uh, and the hairlines and then it's portable. So I don't have to worry about the ink and I can practice it anywhere. And especially for me, like flourishing and be, being able to design those things, I feel like I really need the eraser and the pencil. It kind of helps me to exercise that creativity in my mind um, to explore all the possibilities of the strokes. And so I would definitely, I, I don't think I can do anything without a pencil. I think it's really interesting that you you said, like the first thing that came out of your mouth too, is that you didn't think that would be a popular opinion because mm -hmm. it's actually my number one most popular YouTube video ever, which is where I show really? you can do calligraphy uh -huh. with a pencil. I think people just yeah. don't, they don't think that you can do it with such a simple tool. So I'll link to that mm -hmm. video here too. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that answer. I think that's like, that's the perfect answer. And it's not one that most people would like naturally think of. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Young Hey, where can people find you and learn more from you mm -hmm. and get all the things from you? Uh, we'll have a website. So you guys can check out logoscalligraphy.com. And then there's like a little tab called online courses. So I teach two online courses for beginner copper plate as well as flourishing. And then hopefully can roll out some more courses in the future. But I also sell a practice sheets, digital downloads, as well as um, actual physical pads. Um, so you guys can get all the information on my website. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on again and showing us all of those tips. I think it'll really help people. And I know that a lot of people are going to benefit from your guide sheets too. So super appreciate having you on here. It was lovely to see you for the second time and maybe we'll have a, a part three video at some point. Yay. Thanks for having me. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye.